Welcome to the GearWire.com Crosstalk Hangover Cast for Friday, January 12th. Oh, As always, I'm your host, <laughs> Mike Payne, and I'm joined by Drew Craig. What's up, all? Britton Weatherall, and Mr. Grizzly Adams himself. Diabetes. <laughs> This week on Crosstalk, we'll be previewing some of the news we expect based on buzz, early releases, and wild speculation. You right there, buddy? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting a fun fact for today. Here's a rundown of what we'll be checking out this week. First, the new Moog Music Moger Foger. Some news on that. New Fender Amps. The Return of the Rhodes Piano. Mackie Traction 3 may be released. Cakewalk Project 5 Version 3. New DJ Control Systems by Native Instruments and M Audio. And finally, a salacious rumor about the possible release of Reason 4.0. Yeah, wow. Ooh. That's exciting. Yeah. Before we get started, a quick reminder if you want NAM news, go straight to GearWire.com for the latest updates. We'll be discussing the new releases from the GearWire forums and keeping visitors up to speed with the GearWire newsletter. Crew will be there in attendance, getting video, checking out the new stuff. Should be pretty exciting. Oh, it's going to be great. You guys going to update everything as, as you shoot? Oh, it's going to be like light speed. We're going to like be in the future or something. Nice. Is yeah. it going to be like nice. one of those We're gonna be posting like a video blog? Future. Is this going to be an up all night editing and getting it out to <laughs> the course, to yeah. gearware.com? No sleep. No sleep for a whole week. See, that's why I'm glad you I'm gotta, You got to do like a... Um, uh, What's that? Like a sequence with uh, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> a montage? Yeah, a montage. You know, GearWire is due for a montage. We'll yeah, buy, that's true. We'll have to buy the rights to it, I think. Yeah, that's true. No Sleep Till. <laughs> All right. Oh, I don't know. Is, 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 has, that, has that song gone like 30 years yet? No, no unfortunately not. Keep waiting. You All could right, always so pay Adam Yock, though. I mean, yeah, he'll take the money. So first up, uh, Moog Music is planning on releasing a new Moger Foger Winter Nam 2007. We don't know too much about it, but uh, they have a new at Nam page in their Moger Foger section. Which doesn't something even is look coming. At all. Something is coming, but what what is it? So far, Moog has only released a filter, a ring modulator, a phaser, an analog delay, and their MRF, which is their multiple residence filter array. My question to the crosstalk panelists is: What can we expect? What's coming out? Dude. Well, they, they do have sort. Of, the, the only reason that everyone thinks it's going to be a uh, pedal mm -hmm. is because on the Moog website, um, if you click on the Moger Foger um, tab and then, cl and then click, um, there's, there's a one that says new at Nam, Right. And then you see, you see a product page. It, the price is zero. There's no name of the product. There's just this flash video um, that, you know, it's basically just a looping thing saying new at Nam, um, Moog music. Um, but it's the sound that really is important. And you guys want to take a listen? Yeah, sure. it sounds yeah, awesome, I have to say. It's beautiful. All right. I'm Maybe. excited. Wow. <laughs> I'm assuming that everything we're hearing right now is going through the new product. So, it kind of sounds Wild. like a, a filter distortion. Right, yeah. right. That's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, all right. Oh, that. that's really wild. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, so it sounds kind of like a sweeping filter distortion, mm -hmm. um, probably the envelope generator. thing I'm, I'm interested in is that since this is a, the first pedal. That's that, like a really that, synthy sound. Yeah, it Yeah, is. but it sounded like guitars. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure. It There's a couple like dive bombs in there, I think. There's like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I mean, exactly. if the whole design behind these Mogerfoger pedals is, is basically that they can work together yep. and they're each sort of like, Part, like a piece, you know, they're like uh -huh. each kind of like a panel on a on an analog synth or, or or something like that. He it treats it like a modular synth, and mm -hmm. e each little well, pedal there's is that a panel. There was they just discontinued the CV mixer. Yeah, there's also that, but I'm just I'm just wondering if um, which is for all if, if now if now they're going to start releasing things that have multiple things like a filter distortion with right. an envelope generator. Right. That would kind of piss me off, though. Really? I think that would ruin the whole thing that they've like just built up to. That would bat yeah. Excuse me, but that would bastardize his name. I'd be pissed. <laughs> see, see that that's what I'm, that's what I'm why I'm wondering. Like, are they going off into this other direction? They better not where be. they have like more than one <laughs> more than more than one thing. Um, in one box. I will beat well, I think it's all going to children. <laughs> I, I, I think it's it's all coming down to the sound of the pedal, what it can create, and we heard it, and it it's sounds cool. cool. It so sounds cool, but I think no matter what direction they go, if it creates that that we just heard, I think it's a, a positive step. Amen. No matter what. Anything that'll make my guitar sound like that, no, going to be on like flies on shit. So. <laughs> no, that's cool. I mean, like the well, for example, the, Bob Moog was dead when they did the uh, little fatty, right? And that was, and I think the little fatty is a little amazing. different. 
then had Bob still been around. Yeah, well, the prodigy was like the yeah. same sort of thing and and. Well, like, I mean, like the knobs on the little fatty are all just like new, like, yeah, so, sort of like, you know, when the, the guy who's been keeping this company in line is, yeah. is now not, not there anymore. Like, yeah. where's the company going to go? And maybe it's going to branch off a little bit. I think, sure. I think they're definitely getting into that more affordable realm. That, that would be cool if, if this were something a little bit more affordable. But well, still up to the quality of, of Moog stuff. Well, like, kind of like the little fatty. Exactly. But, I mean, that's still pretty expensive stuff. Well, in about a week, we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Should be cool. Oh, we got to yep. move on, don't you? That's, a, that's what you're doing. To <laughs> exactly. like, move on. I'm like, I can talk about this all day. I love Moog. <laughs> I love Moog electronics. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Additionally, Fender will be showing their new amps at Winter Nam. Fender has recreated its 57 Deluxe amp into a new production model. The 57 Deluxe is a 12-watt, 12-inch speaker amp hand-built one-by-one at Fender's cal- factory in California. Supposedly, the street price on this amp is about $17.99. Kind of pricey. What do you guys think about the 57 Deluxe? Yes. I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really this psyched was, about it. This was actually leaked. We have pictures. Um, Let's check it this out. This was leaked on the gear page is where I saw it. It was linked on the gear. Uh, I'm sorry. Leaked on the gear page is where I saw it. Okay. And this is a um, sexy tweed. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like the f- this. Well, the fifty-seven deluxe is a tweed amp. Jensen speaker. Yeah. Uh, well, that's kind of probably probably very similar to the twin reverb reissue. I, I, I kind of. I, I really hope that they do the. Uh, I really wish they did the the Weber one, the, the Weber Blue Dog ceramic coils. I think they sound better, but that's just me. I'm a vintage thirty guy myself. Yeah, but perhaps. I mean, of course, these are just leaked pictures. It yeah, yeah, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to have a Jensen speaker in there. True. I, well, if they do do Jensen's, it's better than their normal coils. Oh, I'm, for 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 this price and yeah. like a hand built amp, I'm sure they're not going to skimp on the speaker. Yeah, I'm not, sure it'll right. be nice. If, if it's those Jensen's, like similar to the ones in the Twin Reverb, you, did you like the reissue? I know this is it's, kind of off topic, but like this is something that we got to take into account for the fifty seven. Do you like the, re, the reissue? I, for my. If, for, for my money, I'm not going to buy a twin, yeah. um, or any amp like a twin, just because I prefer to have some distortion before exploding the room with volume. Like yeah, volume. Well, I, I have a Music Man, so you know, like nice. um, the two twelve HD, and the thing is, is that it's really similar, I think, in theory to this to the reissue because it does have, um, but it has some difference, like solid state preamp section stuff like that, mm-hmm. which is like pretty important because there's not the gain on the solid state side is not as good as the power amp gain and whatnot. The problem with this is that it has a solid state rectifier, which kind of affects the twin sound, Yeah, which is kind of a shame. I wish they would have stuck to it. I liked it. And this is why it ties back to this. Yeah. I think this is definitely going to be more of a, I mean, this is a lower wattage. It's going to be a lower wattage amp. It seems, um, so it, hopefully it'll break up easier. I'm sure it'll be yeah. nice. I'm really happy with what Fender's been doing. The Princeton recording amp, mm-hmm. you know, just making mm-hmm. quality that stuff. Was, that's real cool. Um, at semi-affordable prices. I mean, so, something you, you know, uh, like every three or four yeah. years, you know, uh, e- even a, a hobbyist is going to, you know, buy something bigger. And, the, and like Fender is producing yeah. those things. Well, right? my issue that, and this is why I was talking about the, the, the twin reissue, is that what are they, are they going to change anything on on? from the original amp design, which really worries you know, me. As I'm a, sure they're going to change something. All they, they really they, they change. They have an idea. You know, they, they, they like to go back and like create, you know, very, very, you know, close replicas or at least, you know, things that do, do the actual vintage ones justice. But they do embrace newer technology. And like a lot of times, you know, like a lot of the, the, the like really nice preamps coming out these days, like mm-hmm. recording preamps, use tons of new technology. And I would choose them probably over a lot of the older preamps just because of the, it's better noise floor, mm-hmm. things like that. And similar with amps as well is better, better shielding, um, more efficient power. Um, your tubes will last longer. See, I, I would, for me as a vintage enthusiast, there's certain things that I find that are different because I own a Vox AC30 as well. The reissue, the Chinese mm-hmm. one. I love it. I do love it. I think it's a great amp, but there, it's weird because it does have different things and different qualities that don't make it the same as a vintage AC30, such as, you know, yeah, I've, adding I've, reverb. I've played the AC30 and the AC15 uh, as well, the mm-hmm. reissues, and I've played older amps. I've never played an old old box amp, Those but I've played like, yeah. I have played a lot of old amps. And it, I, for some reason, just the new Vox amps don't really do it for me. Don't do it for you? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. And that's a lot of, a lot of people's 
you know, th- uh, feelings about it. I like it. I think it's a really great, clean country kind of amp. Like if you're going to do jangly, clean stuff. But once you get into the dirty realm, you're going to want a different amp, like a Marshall or something like that. Yeah. Hmm. Or a Fender. Or a Fender. Getting back to the, the 57, I've, from what I've read, the only main difference between the original and the reissue I mean, for what I've read, mm-hmm. it's just a polarity switch they turned into a standby switch. Oh. Um, but, I mean, for, for me, for what I do, I agree with you, Dan. Like, I'm not looking for something to fill a giant room like the twin, you know. I like a small amp, small watts, that you can use for some clean tone or crank it up, you know, in the studio. And like, crank it up and record it loud. Yeah, yeah exactly. But not too loud. Not too well, loud. Not so loud that you're going to distort your mind. Exactly. This it's amp would be, be perfect for that. You, put a pad. you play a lot of blues, right? Uh, everything, jazz, blues, okay. rock. You right. know? I yeah. think it would be a very versatile amp for the studio. Right. Mm-hmm. If I if I had the money, I would definitely pick yeah. one. Don't you think that would be a good small club blues amp, though, too? Yeah, absolutely. You could yeah. gig with that. I mean, a lot of yeah. people look at 12 watts and go, Psh. I don't know if you need it, but does it have an effects loop? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it has an effects loop. I think it's pretty, you know... Um, True to the the original, doesn't look doesn't look like it does from the yeah, picture. Actually, um, from this the picture on the back, the the rear picture um, that I was looking at, it looks like it has two inputs, um, and possibly a switch for some like a bright switch or something like that. Because I see two switches. It's pretty that's, sexy. That, that may be a standby. I'm not sure. Not yeah. totally sure. Sexy. You know, one thing you can barely see from the picture, but this amp actually does, the volume actually does go up to 11. You can <laughs> kind of see it. No way. <laughs> with that. But, yeah. Sold, I'm buying <laughs> it. <laughs> That's <laughs> the Spinal Tap edition. It's very limited. All right, right. right. <laughs> we, were tra- we were talking earlier about um, lower wattage amps in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, there was some talk on the Fender forum. Uh, it was actually a thread that was about the 57 Deluxe, but ended up there, there was a leak at some point. I'm not sure exactly from who, but there's talk of a champer issue. Uh, the little, the little, like the uh, tiny little, like practice amp. The, the five water, like something like something like Are that. Do you think they're going to go back to like their, the champ, like tweed champ or yeah, like the. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Hmm. Or are they going to do like the silver face, which is like. No, I think the tweed champ for sure. Hmm. Just because I, based on the 57. Yeah. It's not. It's not a silver face, and I, I'm thinking they're going to release them together. I also think they're, that after I read that, I was thinking that this is probably an answer to the Epiphone uh, Val Junior, Junior, also which has gotten tons, tons, and tons of. There's what, also the uh, five watt wonderful. tiny tear for the more pricey higher end recording users. For yeah, but orange. Um, actually, it said it said on the form I think that it was going to be below three hundred dollars. Oh my lord. Which is more than than the Valve Junior, which we wow. have sitting over there. That's why I'm pointing Dude, over there. That's, <laughs> that's super, super, super exciting. Though. Yeah, huh. and that's awesome. And like, it's a whole thing. You know, the Valve Junior was huge for like people who are just getting into tubes. You know, you can you can buy it and then just switch out the tubes, and you, you got an amazing tone. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I, I I have one, but I have the the head version, which is actually better, just because there's a DC yeah. power supply for the tubes, <laughs> and it's just lower noise. I think it's better, better speakers, or you can put yeah. better speakers through it. Um, but the Champ should be a combo, and hopefully, you know they they put put something out. I believe the original Champ was a six inch speaker, which is yeah. smaller. That's mm-hmm. that's what I wish Gibson would get back into doing was producing their um, weird kind of like yeah little amps, those weird little amps and those two tens that they did and. You know, those amps were really cool, and they were really punchy, and like their 8-inch one, and their off-center speaker stuff, and hmm. Hmm. there was a lot of cool stuff that they did back in the day. I don't know too yeah, much definitely. about that, but hopefully Fender really hits it home, because if, mm-hmm. you know, I already got a Valve Junior head, but if it's affordable, and like I try it out, and it, and it sounds okay, I'm probably going to get one. Well, here's my professional studio opinion about you can never have too many small amps if you're recording. Amen. It's true. Amen. <laughs> and, and when they're producing them at such, it, like, if it does, if it is in fact below three hundred dollars, that's affordable enough for most home studios to afford. I, absolutely, it, right? yeah. that's great. And anybody, like any guitarist who who records at home, you know, it, it either now, a Valve Junior would be great, but this would be better. There's something more exciting around the way for keyboard users, though. I think. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, nice uh, yeah. That's your segue? Nice yeah. segue. I appreciate that. that was I, was, nice. I was getting kind of antsy for a segue, yeah, yeah, but I you did it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, but there's something really exciting, and I took a look on the forums about it, too, because, yeah. you know, I, I play a little bit of keys. Not great, yeah. you know. But well, it, to it actually around. is a very cool reissue, another one, since we're on the topic of reissues. And Fender, but the Fender had a partnership for a while. Right, yep. and that it's is the Rhodes Piano, the which Rhodes is Piano. now back. 
Before Winter Nam 2007, if you wanted a Rhodes, you'd either have to deal with emulation or plenty of repairs on an older model. Rhodes will be announcing nine new models with their Mark 7 technology at the Nam show this week. We found a few details about the new roads, which will be offered in 61, 73, and 88 key models. The new roads will include LCD screens, passive to active <laughs> MIDI capability, dual panel USB ports, and a three-band EQ in line with the Rhodes preamp. Exciting stuff. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I want, this is muddy, murky territory for it because like, the original Rhodes was a great you know, electric piano. but mm. One of my favorites. Absolutely. I'm going to whirl it, sir. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, what do you have, Britton? I have a I have a compact organ which is a lot different, you, which is the oh Farfisa yeah, the compact. Farfisa. But well, I mean, it's all like vintage keyboardy stuff. But this is this it, is an electroacoustical one, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're they're keeping. I don't. I wonder how they're going to deal with the digital electroacoustical thing. Is it going to be an no all idea. digital piano? Or is it digital? I'm now? curious. I, the, I don't think it's even digital. The, what, well, what? the LCD screen would imply that but um but i don't, but I don't, I don't really think there's know. any digital signal processing um, but usb I think ports okay here, that's here, for the midi i believe here's but here's what i'm thinking hmm. it will be electromechanical at least this is this is hoping yeah it will be electromechanical the usb ports will be an output for an internal um add converter oh, okay okay so you'd be able to record directly Th those i could take or leave um, MIDI ports, there'll be MIDI sensors, that's whatever, great. that's no big deal. Yeah. Pitch bend. <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully that only applies to the MIDI that it's outputting. Um, the LCD screen, what I'm thinking is that there will, there will, uh, there will be presets, right. but these will be mechanical presets. And I'm hoping that there will be little servo motors like, that control like the tines a little bit. You can move them up, make huh. them a little more bell-like. Yeah. You know, because back in the day, people would open it up, uh, take their soldering gun, and start messing with their... their either they wanted to make it, give it more attack yeah. or um, wanted to smooth out the sound a little bit. I'm guessing that they will have presets that will allow you to actually do that without opening it up. Hmm. That would be great. It's murky I don't know territory, if, uh, but that sounds really expensive. Yeah, it I don't, sound yeah, really I don't know if the, uh, the but, weight but, I mean, supports that either. It's, it's yeah. Rhodes, man. They, there's, well, they, Rhodes, there's Rhodes enthusiasts out there that What do you guys think the, the price would be on something like this? Somewhere two to 4000 is my guess. Not 4000 uh, Well, well I think it could get up there for, for the 80 yeah. yeah. If it does have these like well, you, different you different elect, uh, mechanical presets. Right. Right. But you got to keep in mind that this is kind of along the same lines as like a Moog. Voyager, which is MIDI that controls the analog signal. So it's like, you know, all the digital control it doesn't, hmm. you know what I mean? So it'd be like the same sort of principle. I'm as still that. thinking that the keys... $3,000 keyboard. I'm still thinking that the keys are, <laughs> are, are, are... Like when you press down a key, there's actually going to be a lever that, See, I, I disagree that with that the hammer to hit the time. Just because they say it's lighter. And I've, I've ripped open in the roads. I know it's in there. It looks like a skeleton yeah. of craziness. And Those if they, are heavy. If they kept, yeah. yeah, if they kept that same design, there's, I, I don't see how it could be any lighter. Um, I care to see. But I'm really curious to see, you know? Down in um, the basement. Oh, yeah. that, the, I have to mention one thing that they did that I think that was really good is the, the idea of using anvil cases for the, for the outer. I mean, we've yeah. all seen roads before. I mean, they're all beat to hell. Right. You know, oh. if I had a dollar for every roads I've seen that was ripped and torn. Yeah, so it'd be a lot know, I just rugged. buy one of these, you know, when this they come good. out. <laughs> this is good. This is, this is good that they're doing this, but my, uh, now that just makes me want to say that Vox and, uh, and Farfisa need to come back with the vengeance. Now we can have all the cheesy organ, you know, classic piano. See, I personally, personally no, I'd not. like to see uh, another clav come out. A clav? Oh, yeah. That's my baby. <laughs> I love those things. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. so like the, those are we need the, all these old keyboards need to come back. ARP come back with better synthesizers. Every all of you come come with inventions. <laughs> but please, this please. is my this is my call to you. Are you gonna buy them? Come forth. I will. I would buy. I I would stop being a vintage snob if like more companies like Rhodes were doing were but coming back. Please, Rhodes, let it be mechanical. Yeah, no yeah, kidding. I hope so. No kidding. I think or it'll probably boost the price of vintage roads as well. Right. Too, so and the thing out. is, is, is honestly, like, <laughs> nah, if, if you were to buy, so. like, a, a hardware uh, emulator, like the, mm -hmm. uh, the Nord Electro, yeah. I mean, that's even kind of pricey. So if, if the price is maybe 1000 over that, it'd be marketable. I, I, I think something like that would be cool. And it has the MIDI so you can, right. you can get a little, uh, you know, get a Moog Voyager uh, rack mount and get a little Motif rack mount. Yeah. Yeah. And you got all your sounds anyway. Yeah. And yep. it's just your just controller. It's you muddy, muddy territory because I'm I, I'm a little suspicious <laughs> that it's going to be digital. 
I'm just I kind of I don't suspicious. I I, abs- I, have I don't see how that could be. Well. Do that, if it's it, if blow it was up digital, yeah if, yeah. It, if it was digital, it'd be emulation. No one's gonna dig it. I mean, how, it's it's it's, ele- it's an electroacoustic instrument. I don't I don't see how it could be digital. A yeah, rompler. Yeah, it, it would have to be a rompler, and I don't think they're gonna do that. Yeah, okay. neither do I. Time shall tell. Uh, cool. Well, no, it's, <laughs> find it's, out it's Wednesday. Good, it's good speculation. I don't even <laughs> care about the next thing that's coming up. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I don't think care about. Well, I, I do. I, you I, know, I, dude, I'm I, hoping you have something to say about do. it. I, there's yeah. a lot of people who, that who, care. Who, I think. There's a lot of people that care. People who don't have a lot of money. Stupidest idea ever. We built it up enough. Let me. There's a segue right there. All right, Mackie's Traction Three is rumored to be released at Winter Nam. Applause. <laughs> <laughs> Traction 3 was first previewed at AES San Francisco, but we're hearing that Traction may be ready for release. What do we think about uh, Traction? Are fellas? they going to stock it at Toys R Us? Ooh. <laughs> Ouch. Ow. <laughs> no, but Zing. Maybe, Come on, maybe that's what they're trying to get away uh, from this, this release. It's, I, yeah. I don't think I could ever take Traction seriously. It's like... I don't know. If you were just starting recording, though, I mean, come on. For the price and how simple it is to use. Yeah, and you buy and, it, and you features, buy a Mackie interface. I mean, it's got a, yeah. I mean, it's got a yeah. new. It's got yeah, a new. Yeah, uh, like Mackie loop interface. Based stuff. Well. Yeah, new loop base and browser and all that stuff. That's, that's the main thing that got really shown it, really yes. simple to use. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, that's great. I mean, right now when I'm I've used Nuendo and stuff and searching through my samples is kind of a chore and searching through. Uh, my plugins and all that is kind of a chore. So anything with a browser that's yeah. cheap and easy to use. I'm good. always going to be critical of Mackie, <laughs> except for their old See, lighthouses. I just can't picture you being critical about something like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, my, I mean, like Mackie, Mackie generally just there's a whole long list of issues that I have with them. They're not bad. It's, this is not like my Line 6, like, Warpath sort of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I definitely have some beef with Line 6 ma- products, but this yeah. is... Mackie's always kind of made a good... They're like the working class. They're like I think Bruce I, Mackie's, Mackie's I like Mackie's, audio. Yeah, so much. Yeah, yeah. They're like the Spring, Bruce Springsteen of audio as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> like, they're, 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 the, the, they're the top 40 middle of the road. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you go. That's, that's what they do. So there's no... I mean, it's not bad. I hope... Hopefully, Traction 3 is a little more professional quality to be taken seriously, but... No. I... I yeah. think Mackie should have never gotten into the software game. I wish they would just make better mixers. Yeah. Just focus mm-hmm. on their mixers. Focus but on their EQ section. Unfortunately, they did get into the software game. I think they kind of had to. I mean, look at what Behringer did to their mixer market. Yeah, the Xenix. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? What's well, Behringer going to do this year? That's my biggest I question. Don't, who I don't want to know. This year? <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> Oh man! Oh my God! I, I I'm really. You know what they're gonna release? You know what they're gonna <laughs> Stay release? Tuned for a software DAW. Videos. They're gonna release a software DAW. Oh God! And it's not gonna be called Traction. It's gonna be called. It's gonna be called like Channel Shin or something. Like that. <laughs> Traction. They're, <Right>. gonna, they're, <laughs> they're just gonna remove the T or, or change it to an X. They're actually right. gonna release right. a, a, an man. analog synthesizer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> called the uh, the Mini Fog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not going to be the Voyager, it's the Traveler. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> oh the Motu already has a Traveler, though. Ah, Sorry to kill that. Lawsuit pending already. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, this, yeah. I picture, here's my prediction for Behringer, Phonic, and any other company of the like. Mm-hmm. I picture pending lawsuits and lots and lots of ripoffs and lots of lawyer bills for all of them. And lots of money for Behringer, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. I mean, like, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but, like, yeah, they totally messed with Mackie completely. Um, I wish Mackie would just step up the game a little bit more and get better sounding EQs and preamps because like the Onyx line that they came out with was just kind of like, whatever, man, it's not really that cool. Yeah. You know, I'm not impressed, but if they sounded more like Soundcraft, I'd be like on par, be like. Oh yeah. Key. Well, we'll see what, I uh, definitely <laughs> prefer those soundtracks. We'll see what traction's about next week. Hopefully we'll have some release news on that. Well, not hopefully for Britain, but hopefully for the rest of you. <laughs> All right, so we found some leaks on Music Thing and CreateDigitalMusic.com about uh, two new hardware DJ controllers, one each by Native Instruments and M Audio. All we really know about Native Instruments' new gear is that it is metal, has USB connectivity, and that whatever it is called, I'll bet that the, f- the spelling will be funny. <laughs> Chances are, yeah. it uh, will contain either a K. Well, I don't know. Massive didn't have anything funny in that's it. True. That's true. Wow, that's a first for Native Instruments. They're running out of K words. Right. <laughs> <laughs> M Audio's new gear is equally enigmatic. We know it's DJ related. Other than that, we don't really know anything about it, except that it looks like a light bright. Are you but serious? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen this picture? No, no, no. no. I want. I want it. I want to see. It does look like a light bright. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, I did a little bit of snooping um, uh-huh. for the M Audio thing, and I just kind of 
you know, connected a few things together. Um, the M Audio, um, well, M Audio, the company is right. having a yeah. release, uh, like a press thing, like they did with Torque and their Synchroscience line. Um, they have a big thing for Torque mm-hmm. uh, on the first day of NAM, and then th- you put this together with this leaked picture. So they're going to have a controller too. So I'm guessing there's going to be this controller to control Torque. Obviously, okay. I mean, it's not really that yeah <laughs> that much thought put into that. You know, that just gave me a great <laughs> idea for a synthesizer that works like a light bright. You just like, Ooh. <laughs> oh, that'd be yeah. cool. That'd be like, cool. Like, a, like the a matrix, sequencer? and you put it yeah, in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Step sequencer. Yeah, that'd be it's cool. Like, it's like a light bright, so you could actually do your face. And Thanks for the idea, M Audio. That's what the sequence would sound like. <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. Like. This, hey, uh, it's copyright. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- this uh, this NI DJ controller. The only thing I probably could add to that is it's going to have its core knobs, uh-huh. uh, the little little knob encoders that are more uh, accurate than MIDI. Mm. Cool. And it'll probably be gotcha. speaking to Tractor. Cool. With cool. A K. Tractor is Tractor. awesome, though. You know, I've never used it. It's I, pretty cool. It's, it doesn't it's come very cool. complete, so it's I don't have cool. it. It's very cool. It does. It's the best, <laughs> in my opinion. It's the best DJ <laughs> software that yeah. you can get. Have you tried Torque? I hear Torque is really, really slick. I I haven't actually seen it. I it is I'm actually pretty on the slick. Press loop, no. um, release, man. You know, it's it's got all that stuff where it it'll read Simpty off of a you know vinyl. Yeah, so like you can uh, scratch you can scratch digital music on vinyl. Nice. The Serato. Nice. The Serato scratch rain thing. It's got that, and and just like the whole, oh, it's the visual aspect, CDs. and how it how it syncs stuff up is just. I think it's really slick. Wow, that's cool. Cool. Well, last and absolutely not least are the exciting rumors about potential Propellerhead's Reason 4.0. Ooh. The only thing I'm I'm going off here is rumor. <laughs> rumor, um, okay. Mostly from the KBR audio forums. Okay. Uh, by way of. Or actually, mostly on the propeller head forms by way of KBR. That'd be a really okay. quick jump because knowing propeller head, like they don't update stuff fast. Well, when was three point five? That was two they're years gonna, ago, wasn't it? They're going to release something. What's three point five two? Dude, I don't. I, it's, I guess time is fine. It's been a three point five for a while. Yeah, because yeah, last year they didn't have any announcements. Mm-hmm. But th- they've been pretty. They've been pretty steady f- with their announcements. Mm-hmm. Like every every new version is announced at a show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, there's just there's just been some things on the propeller head forms that have hinted towards a new version. Have they have they started put thinking? that together with with um, you know their history mm-hmm. of of releasing versions, and you sort of get this idea idea yeah. of propeller of reason for propeller head. Have they are they going to do anything different with recycle? Are they going to rebirth? Them? Rebirth? No, I don't think so. It's a bad I idea. think that uh, I think they need to if, integrate recycle into reason and just. Yeah. That would be I, I very think cool. I think beyond that, I think that the only thing they could really do to make four just out of this world amazing is allow multi-channel recording. See, that's there the big go. thing. Is that what people? I are don't saying? think they're going to do that. No, because that would completely change what reason is. If, would, but yeah, reason, the thing reason is, is a, is a synth rack, synth and effect rack. Yeah. If and, if uh, that was you know if that uh, the I guess the alternative to that for reason would be being able to just sample right into it like directly. See, that's why I'm saying if yeah. they just make yeah. if recycle, they make it into a tractor, a, a tracker, yeah. I'm just I, I don't think they're gonna do that. I think it's but, a bad but that, that, idea. That is part of yeah. that, that is part of what people want. But why? I mean, like the beautiful thing about Reason is that it is a synth sequencer that's so like intuitive and great to use, and then you can sync it up with your favorite DAW. Mm-hmm. You, See, that's nice. Right. You know, Rewire. That's great. Yeah. Because like I'm like, oh man, I hate software you know plugins i'd rather just use reason and then i can use it with pro tools and i can get all the benefits of doing my tracking in pro tools and i can get all the ease and intuitiveness of reason Mm -hmm. what they should do is they should include um recycle which is not a recording sampler but it's a sampler that you know you just cut samples in directly and that would make it out of this world amazing yeah Yeah. that's the hardest part is getting samples into reason Um, Mm -hmm. well that's exciting um hopefully we may hear I'm, i'm hoping instead of a track tracker they they get a lot more refills mm-hmm. included with it um they update the sampler and maybe another synth i yeah. i think more analog like more, the more the analog modeling uh, like s- sort of like how what what massive has done mm-hmm. is is sort of hybridize it, instead of just having a uh, tractor and what's the other or not not tractor subtractor mm-hmm. and what's the other one maelstrom. 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 maelstrom instead of just having those two i think I would like to see another synth. I'd in like reason. to, see, yeah. you know, honestly, just out of a personal 
um, thing. I'd like to see them do like uh, some SID emulation, like with. Um, That'd be cool. Well, because Electron, but, yeah. this is this is kind of personal news for me. Like uh, Electron, the synth manufacturer stopped making the SID station, which was a four SID chip uh, synthesizer, mm-hmm. and they just discontinued it. And I, there's nobody gonna nobody's gonna take the ball on that one. Well, so. there is Quadra SID. Um, which is a, the software one. We actually ran into that on an earlier episode. Yeah, that's right. Remember, remember when you said you would you would go nuts if someone made a SID emulator, and then someone emailed us saying, "Hey, QuadraSID." <laughs> yeah. So oh yeah, we didn't get mind. to see it though. No, we did. Well, it, it's a it, it's not a free synth. Ah. Yeah. It's it's you have to pay for it, but it's supposed to be a great. I yeah. I haven't had a chance to try it. Well, if they did something like that, I'd be very pleased. The propeller head. Um, Quadracid yeah. is a great alternative, evidently. I'm an idiot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even remember that. I'd so like to see yeah. when you drink kids, you right. lose your memory. <laughs> right. I'd Welcome like to, to the hangover cast. Head, uh, be able to do VST instruments within reason. That would be cool. That would be too. really Yeah, really that would cool. be. Mm, yeah. I couldn't see them opening it up, though. No. I, I don't want them to open up. I really don't. Yeah. I like them the way yeah. they are. I, more emulators like TB303s, yeah. profits, and stuff like that. I could see, but I could see cool. how that would really, really make it better because their sequencer I like. Mm-hmm. And being able to run um, VSTs in that sequencer, I would, I would like that. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. I would actually create a. But really, probably won't happen. I don't. Do that. <laughs> it's a really interesting kind of thing. Like we can you dream. get all your VST software since going through Reason, and then you dump it into like something like Sonar QAs or whatever. It would, it would make sense, but that's kind of what like uh, Sonar Project Five, and they're actually probably going to be actually they are going to be releasing version I think one or two point five or something like that. How about we just come up with something called Build a Synth? Where it's just like a really easy kind of way to create your own synthesizer, kind of like synth, synth maker. Yeah, and then makes yeah. it a VST or synth edit. I mean, well, they had uh, what was that Native Instruments? Their first synth. Oh, um. contact. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh, reactor. 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 Yeah. Jeez, that was the one. Reactor with the K. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, with a K. But yeah, where that's, it all that's, that's a modular environment. Yeah, that's um, pretty much what that is. No, no, I mean like, the, but. You actually do it kind of like, you know, those like Dreamweaver software, you know, where you yeah. can make a web page easy. Mm-hmm. You just do it's like some software like that. And then you, it, your end result is uh, an interface to okay. plug in. Gotcha. So like a, rea- cool uh, a, a way more like a, simple, easy. Like a what you see is what you get synth builder. Yeah. Yeah. Like like you, gotcha. you, you take, you know, you got options about what you want it to do and, yeah. you know, a full list. And then you can pick your GUI. That sounds great. And stuff like cool. that. And then you got... Your end result is your own I, I think, I think, software. I think set. if Pro- sure. Propeller had added a new synth and it was something like like a modular environment, I think they'd do a really good job of it. Yeah. Or like if it was a mo- like a modular cool. a emulator. modular emulator synth inside of Reason, I think they do yeah. a good job. Maybe it'll happen. I don't know. That's completely that'd be amazing. Off in the ether. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Anyways, listen up, Propeller Head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that that other idea I have is also copyrighted, so <laughs> may not be used without permission. Of he doesn't have a lawyer. lawyer. No worries. <laughs> I have lots of lawyers, <laughs> and I need money. <laughs> that concludes the Gearwire Crosstalk podcast for Friday, January twelfth. The Gearwire crew will be at Nam next week, so you won't see a podcast, but you'll see plenty of updates and video from Nam throughout the week. Thanks for listening and viewing. We will see you guys soon. Adios. Later. Okay, this is a little unusual for our podcast, but there was some late breaking news. Literally minutes after um, taping of our podcast, uh, the information about the brand new Mogrefoger that we discussed earlier in the podcast uh, was leaked and pictures and everything. And this was via our, our good friend Matrix at his Matrix Synth blog. Uh, at uh, That's at Blogspot. Um, so anyway, it's going to be the MF107 freak box that's f-r-e-q-b-o-x and it is actually a voltage controlled oscillator so basically you will plug a guitar or any source in uh any sound source in and there's an oscillator that will track the frequency that's that's going into it um from all i can see this is a monophonic um uh sound generator so only one note at a time you're able to select from different waveforms uh, you're able to select the frequency, so sort of like you can harmonize the two, your, your uh, sound source and the oscillator. Of course, there's um, the drive level, and that's what we heard in the sound sample. We heard a lot of distortion, probably uh, the distortion from this little box. There's a sync switch. That's a little bit mysterious to me. Um, and an envelope amount 
that definitely uh, goes with what we heard in the sound sample. There was definitely some envelope following sounds there. Uh, FM amount. So it seems that you can actually use the audio signal to frequency modulate the oscillator, which has lots of tonal possibilities. And of course, a mix knob. And in standard Moger Foger style, there are plenty of quarter inch jacks on the top for different control voltage uh, inputs, outputs, uh, things of that sort. So thanks for checking this out, and thanks for watching this addendum to GearWire Crosstalk number 026.